About five years ago, I noticed that there were three major things that were happening in our lifetime that haven't happened before. And I learned through the surprises that many of the times that I was surprised is because things didn't happen in my lifetime. Those three basic things were the amount of printing of money and the creation of debt and what that means for inflation and the value of money. The second was the amount of internal conflict. So we pay attention to these things. In other words, gaps in uh, wealth and opportunity and values leading to populism, populace of people who will fight and win at all costs, and that causes a threat to democracy and a threat to solving some of these problems. And the third thing is international conflict. In other words, the rise and challenging of great powers. And so I studied the history of those over the last 500 years, and I watched those patterns. There are basics, very common sense basics, right? You can't spend more money than you earn without creating debt. So when the government does that, it has to create debt. It sells that to investors. So there's a supply demand. If you don't pay a high enough interest rate, they don't want to hold it. And as a result, debt is buying power. When you put debt and money into the system, you hype it up. But debt also creates an obligation to pay back. And when there's too much debt, then there is the, how do you pay back? Do you give it in the same hard value or do you print money? Throughout history, when this has occurred, you can go back to the Old Testament. You see the, the situation that we're in. That's fundamentally. You can only raise your living standards by being productive. We have a basic fundamental problem there. We're creating unsound finances because we print a lot of money. We want to spend more money than we have. It's like a human being. Same for a government. The only difference between a government and a human being is they print money. So now productivity, if you invest in education, they're very clear indicators of what makes living standards rise. First, the foremost, is do you raise children, ideally in a family that has two parents who care about them, and that they go to school, a good school, and they get well educated, and they are civil, and they come out to a world of equal opportunity, maybe a lot of resources that when they have great ideas, it's financed, and you have peace, you have prosperity. Those are the only things you need. I worry about how we are with each other most fundamentally, right? Problems always exist. But in this world in which there's great domestic conflict and there's great international conflict because of these differences, history has shown, shown these patterns. It happens over and over again. Internationally, there are five types of war. There's a trade war, a technology war, a geopolitical influence war, a capital and economic war, and a military war. We've got them all. When you use economic warfare and capital warfare, and it accelerates, such as you cut off countries from receiving th needed things, when all that happens and you see an increase in military spending, you're close to the point of another military war, and you have financial problems. So as I watch that, yeah, it comes down to how people are with each other. We have a situation in which the who was chosen as leaders in democracy is a function of these groups of people who say, you must fight for me. So you get populists of both sides. So almost leaders cannot lead. They cannot do the strong changes without somebody agreeing. We're arguing over everything. They say you have to pick a side, okay? And so you pick a side increasingly, whether it's domestically or internationally. You will be asked to pick a side in that conflict. That doesn't lend itself to compromise. It doesn't lend itself to thinking about the whole. So I'm concerned about that.